Acts 24, it's a short 27 verses, and it moves really fast, so it's going to be short this evening. But it wasn't short for, for, for Paul, because uh, he's in prison two years in this chapter, I think. And remember, we left him uh, last week. Let's, let's get, catch back up how we got here. And where Paul went, there's two things happened. There was a riot and there was a revival. Some people believed and some people rejected. And uh, he went to Jerusalem, being warned not to go there because it was already a hotbed for Paul. And they accused him of uh, taking a Gentile into the temple, which we found out it wasn't true. They just thought that. They were wrong. And it was a big stink. And uh, the soldiers got involved because they had come out and restore order. And Claudius Lysias was the military leader's name. And uh, he was about to have old Paul whipped. Find out what was going on, and he found out that Paul was a Roman citizen, and you can't whip him, or you're going to be in real trouble with the higher authorities too. So now he's got himself a, a problem on his hands. He's got a Roman prisoner. He don't even really know what to charge him with. He's a citizen, and uh, he does a pretty good slick thing there. He gets the trouble off his desk and gets it up to his superior's desk. He sends him on down the road. He's going to go see the governor, Felix, and. There's a plot. You know, they're, they're going to try to kill Paul. Ambush him. Way lay him on the side, those Jews are. But uh, Claudius Lysias surrounds him with hundreds of soldiers and takes him back up to, uh, to see the governor something like 80 miles away. And he gets there. And we, that's where we pick up with the court. He's, he's been brought in for the hearing. We get to verse 1 of chapter 24. Uh, five days goes by and the court proceeds. Now remember, they, there's a above 40 guys who made a silly vow they said we're not going to eat we're not going to drink until we've killed Paul mm -hmm. and this chapter begins with and after five days this is besides the other days it took to get there and everything else now I don't know but <laughs> either they give up on their stupid vow probably or somebody's getting awful hungry and thirsty now <laughs> we're not going to eat we're not going to drink until we kill Paul well <laughs> Either they starved to death or they gave up on their on their silly vow eventually, I guess. So after five days, Ananias, the high priest, descends with the elders, with a certain orator. This guy is like the lawyer. He's the prosecuting lawyer that comes with him. His name is Tertullus, who informed the governor against Paul. So we're in the courtroom. Here comes Tertullus out. He's the, he's the prosecuting lawyer. And Paul's going to be his own lawyer and try to defend himself. Verse 2, and when he was called forth, Turtles began to accuse Paul, saying, and you can put the parentheses, the, the quotation marks begin right here. The lawyer goes up, and he's a good lawyer. First thing he does, he's going to flatter the judge. <laughs> you want a lawyer like that, right? So he, so he addresses uh, Ananias, the high priest, and Governor Festus is here. So Turtles begins, and he says, uh, seeing that by thee we enjoy great quietness, and that very worthy deeds are done unto this nation by thy providence. Now, see, he's buttering up the judge, Festus, here. Felix, by the way, Festus takes Felix's place in the end of the chapter. This is still Felix. It says, we accept it always and in all places, most noble Felix. Judge Felix, right? <laughs> and with all thankfulness, boy, we're glad we got you. I mean, you're just the, you're just the bomb, right? <laughs> Number four, notwithstanding that, that I be not further tedious unto thee. I know your time's important, Judge, so I'm going to be in a hurry here. I don't want to take up too much of your time. So I pray thee or ask you that, that you would bear, hear us of thy clemency a few words. Just listen to me for a few words. For, for we found, and he points over at Paul, process. Now we found this man, a pestilent fellow, and a mover of sedition among all Jews throughout the world a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes, who has also gone about to profane the temple, whom we took, and we would have judged according to our law, we could have handled, but the chief captain, Lysias, he was the one in charge down to Jerusalem, remember Claudius Lysias? Mm -hmm. He came upon us and with great violence took him way out of our hands. He's kind of getting old Lysias, trying to get him in trouble too, ain't he? And the lawyer's basically saying, that this shouldn't even be before your court. We would have handled this ourselves if your soldier had gotten involved. 
And if their soldier hadn't got involved, Paul would probably be dead by now. They'd tore him apart, right? Commanding, he's still, the lawyer's still going now, Turtles, commanding his accusers to come unto thee, Lysias did, by examining of whom thyself mayest take knowledge of all these things whereof we accuse him. That's pretty brief, brief opening prosecution. And I think that's where the quotation marks in. In verse 9, it says, And all them Jews that were there, they assented. That means when he got through, they probably all said, Amen. <laughs> they assented, saying that these things were so. Now Paul gets to stand up and defend himself, verse 10. Then Paul, after that, the governor had beckoned unto him and just pointed at him and let him know, nodded to him or something, said it's his time. Beckoning unto him to speak, Paul answered, and here's where Paul's quotation marks begin. For as much as I know that thou hast been of many years a judge unto this nation, I do the more cheerfully answer for myself. Because that thou mayest understand that there are yet but twelve days since I went up to Jerusalem to worship. That's why I was there, not to stir up trouble or do anything else. I was just to worship. And they neither found me in the temple disputing with any man, neither raising up the people, nor the synagogues, nor the city. Remember, they saw him in the temple, but what's he doing? He's keeping a vow. He's in there worshiping with those other guys. And Paul says, neither can they prove the things where they're now accusing me. They got to be innocent until proven guilty. He said they can't prove what they're saying. The reason they couldn't prove what, they're, prove what they were saying was because there wasn't any truth to it. So Paul says, I'm not where they can't prove the things whereof they now accuse me for it, but this I confess. I will confess this to you, Judge Felix, that after the way which they call heresy, which they call heresy, he's a Christian, see, the Jews condemned said he's a heretic. He said, I will confess that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I. But who am I worshiping? He the God of my fathers, our ancestors God. Because Paul understood the way we Christians understood that Christianity wasn't a brand new religion over and opposed against Judaism, but Christianity was the fulfillment of Judaism, that the Messiah has come in Jesus Christ. It, it's all a matter of whether you accept or reject that Jesus is the Jewish Messiah the Christ, that's what it means, the Messiah. So that's how I worship the God of my fathers, believing, and this is pretty powerful too. Now he's talking to a, a Roman, but he's also considering who the audience is, all these Jews sitting around. So he's defending himself to them too. He says, I'm only worshiping the God of our ancestors, and I'm believing all things which were written in the law of the prophets. I believe the Bible, he said. And, and I have hope toward God, that which they themselves also allow that there shall be, a, here's that divisive word that caused all that trouble before. Remember when Paul looked and he said he realized half the audience down there at Jerusalem were Pharisees and half of them were Sadducees. And he knew that they were all against him. And he knew that by just saying this one phrase, all of a sudden half of them would be on his side. Mm -hmm. I believe in the resurrection because the Pharisees did and the Sadducees didn't. He says, that's why I'm on trial, for the resurrection. So he, he won half the crowd to him right there. And he says it again here in, in front of all those Jews and, and when he's on trial of, up at the governor's mansion. <laughs> that there will be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and the unjust. And herein do I exercise myself to always have a conscience void of offense toward God and toward men. I try to live right toward God and toward other people. Now, he's continuing his defense. He said, now after many years, I came to bring alms to my nation and offered. Remember, he had gone about collecting mm -hmm. from some of the Gentiles to take back to the Jews at Jerusalem. He said, we're going to help out the poor Jews. I thought always thought it was a brilliant move because you had the Gentile and the Jewish split kind of thing early on in the church. And what a, what a pastoral thing to do for the pastor to take up an offering for the Gentiles to help out the Jews. Say, hey, we're still the, the same church here if we're believing in, in Jesus. So he said, I came to bring alms to my nation and offerings. Now, there's something else in there, too. We're going to find out and get a little bit ahead of ourselves. But Felix was a, 
Well, it's probably normal in Felix's day, but it was corruption. So when he hears Paul talking about, I had an offering to bring back to Jerusalem, Felix is thinking he may have some money. We find out later on that he wants to keep hearing Paul because it's implied that if Paul will just give me some money, I can turn him loose kind of thing. So already he knows Paul may have some money here. So after many years, I came to bring alms to my nation and offerings. Verse 18, whereupon certain Jews from Asia, they followed me to Jerusalem. They, they found me purified in the temple, neither with a multitude nor with I wasn't causing any kind of disturbance, though. And he says, continuing his defense, those Jews, they ought to have been here before thee and object if they had ought against me, which was Roman law. If somebody accused you of something, your accusers had to be there. It's court. Or else let these same here say, if they found any evil doing in me while I stood before the council, except it be for this one voice that I cried standing among them, touching the resurrection of the dead, I'm called in question by you this day. That's why I'm here, because it's a religious thing, and they didn't like me saying that I believe in the resurrection. Them Sadducees did and that's what caused the riot before we got them all stirred up and fighting against one another, didn't it? So that's the end of the quotation marks in Paul's defense. Verse 22, now when Felix heard these things, having more perfect knowledge of that way, he knew more about why Paul was there and what he was charged with, so then he deferred. He deferred them and said, when, when Lysias who should have been there anyway before they went to court. He's the one that was down at uh, Jerusalem that was in charge and had Paul sent up here. All he sent with him was a letter, last chapter, remember? So he said, Lysias is going to have to come and be part of this too. So when Claudius Lysias, the chief captain, will come down, I'll know the utmost of your matter. And he commanded a centurion, one of the soldiers, to keep Paul. I'm going to put him under house arrest here. But seems like kind of to be good to him, but really what he's doing here, he says, let him have liberty, let his friends come and visit him, all this kind of thing. I think what Felix is doing, he's a little bit worried too because now he's got a prisoner that he really ain't understanding what law he's broken, but he's keeping him under arrest, and so he could get in trouble on up the ladder too. So he's trying to smooth it and play it both ways right here. It happens as a... 23, keep Paul, let him have liberty, and he should forbid none of his acquaintance to minister or come unto him. They can come bring him food and take care of him and everything else. Which, by the way, if you was in a prison in Rome, the government didn't feed you. Unless you had friends to come and bring you meals to you, you'd starve to death. 24, so after certain days, when Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, now you can read in Josephus, he's a big Hollywood soap opera behind this too, but it's true. Uh, Drusilla was fit was a woman that she's one of the Herods. They was all crazy anyway. Remember the King Harry and all that family? A lot of them went insane and everything. Well, he'd stole one of them's wife. That's who Drusilla is. He was, he'd stole her from another guy here, is, and now Felix made her his wife. Drusilla is her name. She was a Jewess, see, so she was, she's familiar with the Jewish religion. And and he sent for Paul and heard to him concerning the faith in Christ. So. His wife probably wanted to hear more now. He said, go get that prisoner. Let's, let's see what he's got to say. Now, Paul comes and he's explaining to Felix about what this Christianity thing is. Kind of still called the way back in that day. And he, he explained to Felix, Felix, and it says, uh, verse 25, this is really a powerful verse. As he reasoned of righteousness... Paul telling Felix about the faith in Christ, and as Felix says, he reasoned of righteousness, temperance or self-control, and judgment to come, Felix trembled. Now, you've got to think about this for a minute. Paul's explaining Christianity to Felix and his wife. Paul's a pretty good preacher. Everybody agrees with that. <laughs> And he's got an audience of Felix and his wife, and he's telling him what this Christianity thing is, and it's more than just Paul there. The Holy Ghost of God shows up, and Felix gets under conviction. It says he trembles. Now, I point out to you, Felix wasn't acting right here. 
I think it, the Bible says he trembled. He wasn't acting like he was interested. He really did get under conviction, I believe. As Paul's explaining about eternity for him, uh, righteousness, doing the right thing, having self-control and the judgment to come. And it says, Felix trembled. And Felix answered and said to, to Paul, go your way for this time, and when I have a convenient season, I'll call for thee. Now, we see recorded in the Bible what one of Satan's greatest tricks is that he still does to people every day today. How many people hear the gospel and think about eternity and they get under conviction, but they listen to the devil whisper in their ears, mm -hmm. I'm going to get right someday, mm -hmm. but when I have a better time, I'll get right. Now, we don't have any record in the Bible. That don't mean it didn't happen. I hope it did. But we don't have any record in the Bible that Felix ever got saved. And he never had a better time than he had right there because what's happened? Paul's giving the gospel. God's convicted him to the point that he trembles, but then he puts it off to later. We've got a modern-day parable about that. People that are going to get right someday, but they don't. And you've probably heard it, but it ain't Bible. It says the road to hell is paved with good intentions. There's a lot of people probably in hell today, I guarantee you, that had good intentions that they was going to get right someday. But just not today when I've got a better time. But that's why the Bible says boast not yourself of tomorrow because you don't know what a day may bring forth. That's why God says now is the accepted time and today is the day of salvation. And old Felix said, Paul, I'm going to have you come back and talk to me later on, and maybe then, or maybe next time, and uh, when I have a more convenient time, when, it's, when I have a, a, a more reasonable time, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. I'll, I'll call for you. <laughs> Don't call me, I'll call you, right? Mm -hmm. So Paul does come back because he's going to spend years with him here under his arrest. So he hoped uh, also that money should, Felix hoped that Paul would, I think Paul, I think the first time, even though Felix probably brought him in for a corrupt reason, unless his wife just wanted to hear about this Christianity thing, even that first time, Felix might have called, come and said, well, if he'll just, he talked about having that money that he's going to take to Jerusalem. If he'll just grease my palm, I think we can take care of this thing. But whatever his motive was, he did tremble. And he had an opportunity right then, and he put it off. But he keeps calling for Paul to come back and talk to him for some more, and it don't ever say that he ever trembled again. He just hoped that Paul would give him some, a bribe. He hoped that money should be given him of Paul that he, he might lose him. All it takes to be set free, Paul, is <laughs> whereof he sent for him with the offering, more often than the more. See, keeping, he's hoping for the money so he can turn it over. And see, that would have that would have been a double whammy for old Felix. He'd get out of this mess that he's in. He's got this prisoner he don't know what to do with, and he'd get some money too. But Paul wouldn't play along with him, would he? That he might lose him where he sent for him the offender and communed with him, talked with him. But after two years, now he's been locked up up there for two years. Now that's not too bad. He ain't in a dungeon. He has kind of the run of the place, and his friends can come, and he's got liberty and all. But he's still a prisoner. In two years' time, it's... Uh, the governor's term, Felix, runs up and he's replaced by a governor named Felix, or Festus, Portius Festus. Felix on his way out, Festus is coming in. After two years, Portius Festus came into Felix's place, the room. And Felix, willing to show the Jews a pleasure, he's trying to smooth things out with something he'd mess him up with, made a mad at him before he left. So he said, uh, just to kind of grease their palm too. He says, I'm going to keep that old Paul locked up. <laughs> he left Paul bound. A lot of corruption going on here. But even in the midst of the corruption, God showed up when Paul was preaching, and this guy had an opportunity to get right with God, and he blew it. And people do it every day. Lord, we thank you for this word of God today as we get ready to study next week about trial continuing and Paul going before Festus. We just... Uh, on his way to Caesar, we just um, thank you for the lesson that's here, that, that verse about how Felix trembled when he thought about eternity, a reason of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come. 
but then he blew it. Lord, we pray for somebody that may be today that's uh, in that valley of decision, may hear the word. Don't blow it. You'll never get a more convenient time than right now to make things right between you and God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.